Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News. Today we welcome back one of our uh, regular guests, and that is Brian from Santiment. How are you, Brian? Great to be here, Alex. Doing quite well. It's been a rocky, turbulent ride in crypto lately, so lots to go over. Sure has. And you guys have got all your great analytics tools. Brian's going to give us a run through today, guys, of some of the um, top metrics that we're looking at to decide whether or not this um, recent pullback and I guess a bit of a flush out how it feels to me is uh, over because everything was super, super bullish. Um, and a few people are starting to, I guess, panic a little bit. But it's important to remember, guys, that a year ago we were still in the low 20,000s and we had a monster run to 70. We know these bull markets have these pullbacks from time to time. So what are your general yeah. thoughts, Brian? You said it well. What a difference a year makes, let alone three or four months, because, you know, sitting at about 57K as Bitcoin is now, um, I think people would be thrilled if it was the start of 2024 or, you know, October or November when we were still back at like 30 to 40K Bitcoin. So we've come a long way, but suddenly because we went to 73K and then back to 57 People are now bearish and feeling like the party's all over um, and that sell pressure and overly bearish sentiment could come back to haunt a lot of people who are doubting the, uh, the crypto market's ability to keep climbing. Yeah, maybe one other thing, uh, one other metric we might look at. Um, I, I just got that gut feeling that there was a lot of people, almost a bit of boredom and um, it was very different to a top where everyone is euphoric and retails piling in and, and, and that type of thing. So, yeah, I guess we did see a little bit of, you know, the main coin side of things pumping, um, which was a little bit unusual for this stage of the cycle. But I, I think there was a lot of a, a bit of a lull in sentiment, um, which to me suggests that that wasn't the peak of this bull market or anything to worry about. Yeah, 100%. We can look, we can kind of visualize how bullish or bearish people have been uh, this is our, our social trends dashboard where we can see what trending words are out there. Obviously, no surprise to see FOMC and Jerome Powell. Uh, I wouldn't be, yeah, Fed is up here. Let's see if inflation, inflation doesn't make the top 10 right now, but I guarantee it's closely behind that. Um, if we were to look at something such as, you know, just the words buy or buying versus sell or selling, take off social dominance. We'll look at just the blue here as buy or buying. You can see there has been an uptick. Zoom in a little bit more to just the last month. So in blue is buy or buying. You can see there's been a bit of an uptick just in the past 24 hours today, but there's been an even larger uptick here in yellow representing the negative words, the people who are calling for it being sell time. Uh, to me, that's a sign of FUD, um, and it's really not a surprise. It's natural for you to see more and more sell calls as prices go down, and then they kind of disappear if there's any sort of price rebound, like we're seeing very minor signs of right now. Yeah, perfect. I really, I really like that. Like I said, uh, that whenever there's an even balance, there's um, plenty of room for more people that are selling to become buyers. And as you said, it's kind of once everyone's on one side of the boat and everyone is buying and euphoric, yeah. that's when you need to start worrying. Yeah, it, to simplify, you know, the way that our community at Santiment makes money and, and profits is really just looking at two bullet points. What are the uh, key stakeholders doing, the sharks and whales who have tens of millions or more dollars in a given asset? And then what is the crowd doing, as in the retail traders and the, the more novice uh, smallholders out there who you want to basically counter trade and do the opposite of at all times? So yeah. in essence, follow the smart money, the, the wealthy people who already own tons and can move mountains anytime they wish to, and avoid following the crowd, especially when they start to get extreme in leaning one way or the other like they're doing right now with the sell calls yeah. is that a good segue to maybe have a look at what some of the whales and sharks are doing um yeah. i know people tend to be most interested in bitcoin ETH, and solana is probably the, the big three for this cycle mm -hmm. yeah we can start with bitcoin uh, just as a warning solana is a little more limited because of our blockchain uh tracking on there but we definitely have plenty on bitcoin and ethereum i'll show bitcoin first uh, this line represents the 10 to 10K BTC holders 
and what they're either accumulating or dumping on any given day. You can see from February 4th all the way up until this peak or so right here on March 25th, that seven-ish week run, they accumulated just about 215,000 Bitcoin. I believe that's in the hundreds of billions of dollars if we took out a calculator right now. Uh, since that time, from March 25th, which was just about 10, 11 days after the all-time high, up until now, we see that they have actually dumped a little under 35K. So short-term wise, they're definitely moving down a bit and probably partially responsible for this drop. Uh, but their long-term trajectory, I mean, if you just draw from their bottom uh, that they were holding on February 4th, it's still up plenty. They're still up, you know, just in these past three months, roughly, about 180,000 Bitcoin. So I think people are a bit overly panicked when it comes to, you know, the presumption that whales are, are jumping out and trying to take all the profits and send the price down. Yeah, fantastic. That's really good to note as well. Um, what about Ethereum? Yeah, let's shift over to, over to ETH here. All I need to do is switch over the asset here. And then these were locked. So just a quick, you know, 101 on how to use sentiment. There's a lock which would keep it on Bitcoin. I'm going to unlock that and that automatically switches to Ethereum. And I'll do the same for this one. So now we have the percentage held. Um, we're going to switch the number of coins because obviously Ethereum is what about 5%, maybe 4% of the price of Bitcoin. So we'll just go unmerge that, unmerge that, and we're going to say, what are the what are the 100K or more wallets doing? We'll just keep it very simple. So this is by the percent held. They're actually going up significantly. Let's zoom out a little bit. Yeah, so here's a good zoomed out perspective. We're just going to take off all of the other, all the other lines here to make it simple. So we've got Ethereum's price here as the green bars. We'll ignore that line. It peaked obviously right around the same time that everything else was peaking in crypto. But Ethereum's 100K or more wallets, which now hold, if we talked about 100,000 times 3,000, that's, uh, what is that, something like 100 mil, uh, 300 million or 30 million? It's a lot. It's enough. Yeah, 300 million. So it's it's enough for them to definitely be considered whales. A lot of these, mind you, are going to be exchange addresses. But we saw a distinct shift that went back as early as December of 2022. This was like as the dust was settling after that FTX collapse uh, that really just dropped every single asset in crypto to their two or three year lows. Uh, but you can see just how much of the supply these whales have been accumulating since then, they've added about 14% of the supply. All of the Ethereum that exists, 14% um, of the entirety of it is now in the hands of whales compared to pre-December 2022. Um, so that's a, 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 it's a little different with Ethereum because of the complications of staking and DeFi and things like that. But I, I do consider this a pretty good sign uh, that more and more of the money is going into uh, the hands of very large wallets. Some might say too large of wallets that, that might have, um, I don't know, I wouldn't say nefarious ideas as to what to do with the price, but um, it, it is becoming more centralized um, in a way that Bitcoin is not. So it's maybe not, this would be an amazing sign if this is what Bitcoin's line would look like. I yeah. still think it's more a good sign than bad sign that Ethereum's key stakeholders are holding more and more of the supply. And, um, you know, they, they actually hold over 50 percent by far now, which is um, easily the highest I've seen in, in since the, the first year of Ethereum's existence. Yeah, so positive. But as you say, things like staking, um, restaking and, and all that um, pools and whatever really do make it so that Ethereum does have slightly different um, dynamics than Bitcoin. Exactly. So take it with a grain of salt, but this certainly is not bad news for people who think that this means that 
all the ETH is becoming centralized. That's it's it's not that simple. There's more to it than that. And I still think it's a good sign that the smart money is getting more and more because that means that the tiny wallets are capitulating and, and owning less and less. Um, a lot of that had to do with speculative assets being bought, people swapping their Ethereum, which was kind of uh, in limbo between what Bitcoin was doing and Bitcoin's price dominance over the past year and a half or so. And then, you know, random meme coins, uh, you know, dog with hat, Pepe, um, yeah. speculative assets out there that, you know, as as we laugh about the fact that they exist sometimes, but they are very real and do impact the larger cap assets, especially when people are jumping out of the large caps just to gamble on the the um, more comical speculative ones. Yeah. So Solana worth having a quick look at or too much yep. noise? And do you want to maybe explain why that noise is um, when looking at their blockchain? Yeah, I mean, we'll look at it really briefly. The, the only reason we don't have data on whales is because we're still working on adding that particular blockchain um, with the same capabilities of looking at it the way we do with Bitcoin and Ethereum. But we do have things like trading volume, which I can add. We have RSI for you TA traders out there. You'd be well familiar with the value of RSI. Uh, we'll zoom into just the last three months, make it simple. So just looking at volume in RSI, you can see that it's dropped off significantly in terms of trading volume. Still plenty, um, you know, compared to Bitcoin and Ethereum. I think it's not too far behind what Ethereum is doing. Uh, meanwhile, the RSI is kind of right there in the middle. So it, Solana can kind of go either way. Uh, with the RSI being on a scale of 0 to 100, it's sitting at 52, which is about as neutral as it usually gets. Yeah. Um, and then on the sentiment side, we can also see that social volume and dominance show how much more ignored it has gotten over time. The blue lines here are just the absolute number of mentions of Solana uh, on a daily basis. And then the yellow line here is the actual percentage of discussions related to Solana. So not surprisingly, you know, after this, actually this first top that happened on the 17th of March, the discussions went down significantly and it's almost back to kind of its resting state that it was seeing at the beginning of the year. So all that hype has kind of vanished and that actually could be a good thing uh, because the as you can see, when you get this kind of FOMO, it almost always leads to tops. Um, unless, of course, the price is moving down. Look at volume and dominance as essentially like a uh, direction shifter. Whatever direction the price is going, especially if it's moving way up or way down, if you see a big spike in social volume, social dominance, or even regular trading volume, those are signs that we might be seeing a 180. Um, so if you suddenly see, you know, a big social volume spike for bullish or bearish reasons, you know, maybe Solana's network goes down again for a brief period of time and then Reddit explodes with hate comments about how Solana uh, can't do what Ethereum does and all these debate wars begin. That actually is generally a good sign that a bottom is forming and we're about to see a climb to punish all those people who are fudding out of Solana. So yeah. it's it's really interesting to see how that works. Yeah, that's fantastic insight right there. Um, moving on, what other key metrics have you got for us to look at, Brian? Yeah, I'll give you one more here. Let's see if I can pull up our MVRV model. Mm, it might take a few minutes, so I'll just do it this way. We go down to our main template here. And we go to MVRV, I can find it, there we go. So a few things, the 30 day MVRV, this is the measurement of the average trading returns of any address that has moved a, any portion of Bitcoin in the past 30 days. They are down, as you would expect with this decline, about 10.3%. That's getting pretty close to what's considered an opportunity zone. So anything around like negative 15% here, which we haven't seen in a long time, that would be a historically great time to buy based on history. Um, meanwhile, you don't want it to go 
above plus 15%. So it works on both sides. You can see a few times where the orange line went above that plus 15% line, and we either got an, a flattening out period, or we got a temporary correction, or we got a, a big retrace, or we got the all-time high where that was above plus 15%, and then a lot of traders got punished because too many wallets were in profit. And these MVRV lines hover around 0% if we went all the way back to the beginning of time with Bitcoin so that you're, you're equally seeing Bitcoin's average wallets either above water or below water. So short term, they're back below water pretty significantly. And that's a sign that if you're buying right now or just holding on to your Bitcoin, you're doing so at a less risky time than usual. In the meantime, the long term still shows that we're a bit overbought. Um, and that's not surprising because Bitcoin over the past year uh, is still up a significant amount. If we just look since like November 2nd or so on its own, uh, even with the bear sentiment, don't forget that prices are still up about 67% uh, during that time. So naturally, the long term profit is still very much there, but it is coming down. And I would say if this blue line starts to get close to even or even goes below, you're in you're suddenly in one of the best the best buy zones we've seen for a very long time. The last time we really saw something like that, if I go back to we even say 2022. check on this too. Okay, perfect. So while that other one is loading, check this out. These are what most altcoins look like right now. This black line is even. Anything below that would be semi overbought or even overbought like we see with Mantra Dow. But the vast majority of altcoins, which have been hammered over the past month, lots of bleeding as we saw here. These are all the, the drops in prices. You can see just blood everywhere. So the fact that they're all in green means that they're underbought, especially if they're over this dashed line here. This means they're in that opportunity zone that I just referenced. So if you're a gambler, we're not going to say there's going to be an immediate altcoin celebration, um, even though there has been a bit today after the FOMC news, which we haven't touched on. But these are all especially uh, juicy justified buys right now based on the MVRV metric indicating you would be buying while other traders or hodlers of these coins are in tremendous pain and have lost a lot on their returns. So keep that in mind. Altcoins could be in play if Bitcoin starts to stabilize, moves back above 60K, things like that. Yeah, I think one thing we've been outlining for people um when we were seeing that peak in Bitcoin was what we want Bitcoin to do now is have a bit of a um, pullback and cool off and probably form a range mm -hmm. um, to let all these indicators reset and the people in profit, all these other metrics you've covered today, even out. And when altcoins tend to run the hardest is once Bitcoin finds a low of that range and starts to maybe have a bit of an upward drift again, that's when altcoins will outperform. That's when those altcoin bitcoin pairs and those charts we're looking at need to start putting in higher lows yeah. um and we're definitely seeing that i'm getting more messages from retail investors about different altcoins whether or not the 56k that we saw in bitcoin is the bottom or a lot of people looking at 52 i don't think it really matters we're pretty close now to i think somewhere where it's going to trend sideways or maybe just drift slowly higher but that's going to allow those altcoins to outperform pretty soon in my opinion yeah I agree. I think that's really well said, Alex. And it, the range might be between 55K to 60K for a while, or we might see a bit of a relief rally and then settle into a range of 60 to 65. Either way, once we get kind of an established sideways movement of Bitcoin for like a week or two weeks or so, and traders start to settle in with knowing what they're going to wake up to the next day, that's when you start to see altcoins start to diverge and make their own moves from what I've seen. Fantastic. Um, next up, Brian, anything else you wanted to show us today? No, I just, now that this chart loaded, I just wanted to mention, you know, if we started to see something like what we saw around the FTX collapse here, around mid-November of 22, you can see on the top left of my screen, you know, 
long-term traders down 42%, that's a pretty good sign that you're in a, a great buy zone. So we may not see something that low, but every tick below zero here, if it starts to get into negative range, um, that's where you're in a juicy buy zone. So I definitely recommend just checking out the MVRV chart. We'll have this exact link with all of some Santamin's best metrics in the video for you guys to check out. And you can look at it in real time with a trial. Um, and I know that the Nuggets News coupon code is still very much active and gets you 25% off of your first purchase should you want to try it out. Awesome. Well, that's been fantastic. Like Brian said, guys, we'll put all the links down below as well as those discount codes if you want to sign up for all the premium stuff that I've got as well as the free stuff. But um, Brian, really appreciate you coming on today and um, it's looking pretty interesting for altcoins and exciting to be uh, in that bull market. So we'll have to do this again soon. I would love to, man. And let's see how this FOMC thing plays out. It just happened, uh, what, four, four or five hours ago, and we saw crazy action right after. And as of this recording, altcoins are going pretty well. So yes. we could see in about 24 hours um, the breakouts that we just kind of talked about. Um, so I'm excited to revisit with you next time we get on. Awesome. Awesome. Hope you guys have liked that one. Um, leave any thoughts or comments below, the metrics you're interested in, um, coins you want us to look at maybe next time we have Brian on and whatnot. But um, thanks for coming on today, Brian. Thank you so much, Alex. Talk to you soon. Cheers, guys.